When it comes to picking the right parts for your next gaming PC build, selecting a good CPU and GPU combo is in my view the most important step. Get these two crucial components right and there's a good chance your build will perform well with minimal bottlenecking and be decent value for money. That's why today I'll be walking you through my favourite CPU and GPU combos and talking about things you should look out for when buying either of these parts. Let's do this. The Aura 16X is a gaming laptop that is built to last with the latest Intel Core HX processors and NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series laptop GPUs, running at a maximum of 140 watts. You get cutting edge Wi-Fi 7 support, Microsoft Windows 11 as standard and power delivery over USB for speedy Type-C charging. The 16 inch 2560 by 1600 display is sharp and looks the part, while plentiful storage and DRAM slots make this machine powerful and upgradable. Learn more at the first links in the description below. Before I dive into the combos, it's important to talk about why the right pairing is so important. Feel free to use the timestamps below to navigate through this video, and you can find links to all the products mentioned today in the description too. The first reason that selecting the right pairing is so important is value for money. Now, whether you're spending $500 or $1,500 on your combo, it does not matter. You do not want to be wasting money on one component that could have allowed you to upgrade another. It's no secret that when it comes to building a gaming PC, you want to get the highest end graphics card you can afford. That is simply going to deliver you the best performance. But you need a CPU with enough horsepower to drive that GPU. One that's going to avoid bottlenecking, that's where one component holds another back, and one that ensures you've not gone overkill and that you couldn't swap out the CPU for a cheaper option and subsequently upgrade the GPU to something a little bit better. Now more than ever, I see people in my comments talk about bottleneck calculators. And these are online tools that you can use where you chuck in your GPU, you chuck in your CPU, and it tells you what degree of bottleneck it thinks exists. Now, I don't love these tools and they're far from perfect, but they can give you a good steer as to roughly the parts that will work well together. Bottlenecking is all about common sense though. It's about not pairing up a top-end RTX 4080 with a Core i3 processor. That is never gonna end well. And all of these combos here look to minimize bottlenecking. Crucially, you can't get rid of it. There's always going to be one restraining factor in your system that holds performance back. The other thing to consider when it comes to these combos is the resolution you want to game at. Now obviously some combos are more akin to 1080p, 1440p or 4k gaming, but it also links to that key point of bottlenecking. At a lower resolution like 1080p, your GPU is naturally having to do less work, especially compared to something like 4k where it's working that bit harder to render out all the pixels. This is why you'll find at lower resolution CPUs become more of a bottleneck, which is ironically why those gaming at 4k perhaps have to worry about CPU bottlenecks less than those gaming at 1080p. So if you are looking at gaming at those low resolutions, but on higher end hardware, certainly consider CPU upgrades along the way. So that's enough of the context. What are my favorite CPU and GPU combos right now? Starting from the cheapest and working through to the most expensive. Well, at the very low end of things, I would select AMD's Ryzen 5 5600 or cheaper Ryzen 5 5500 if you're looking for entry level gaming. This is best paired up with AMD's Radeon RX 6600 or even Intel's Arc A580. Now, personally, given the small price difference between either GPU, I would go AMD at this bracket. Intel Arc GPUs started really poorly, but are getting so much better. And while they're less reliable when it comes to performance on a game-by-game -game basis, they do typically deliver great value for money. You just have to check that the Arc card in question performs well in the titles that you want to play. Something that requires, admittedly, a lot less research on the AMD side or Nvidia side of the equation. The reason the 5600 and 5500 a great CPUs for this combo is because the motherboards and memory that they use are cheaper than more modern CPUs. B550 motherboards can commonly be found for in and around the $100 price tag, while the cheaper DDR4 memory that they support is again much more affordable than its DDR5 counterpart. Now this combo is going to perform well in pretty much all the latest titles at 1080p. You get 8GB of video memory, plenty for 1080p gaming right now, while 6 cores and 12 threads on both the Ryzen 5 55 and 5600 deliver good performance. With this affordable price point, we're talking less than $300 for the CPU and GPU combined. There are, of course, some downsides, and it's important to consider what they are. With the older, cheaper architecture comes worse upgrade paths. Yes, you can pick up a Ryzen 9 5900X if you so desire in the future for more performance, but you're ultimately going to be constrained when it comes to the technology on the motherboards available. We're talking less fast storage options, less bandwidth overall, and less room to upgrade to modern, later latest or next generation CPUs. For that reason, this is great to get gaming at 1080p now, but as we move into the future, 
is going to be more constraining than some of the other combos on offer. Moving up to my higher end 1080p combos, and this is where you're gonna see those upgrade paths become much more friendly in the long term. On the CPU side, I'd recommend picking up either the Intel Core i5-14400F or AMD Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, personally, on the point of upgrade paths, the AMD option is much stronger. You're going to see the existing AM5 socket and all of the motherboards around it support at least the next generation of Ryzen 8, 9,000 CPUs and maybe even beyond. Intel's LGA1700 socket, which powers their 12th, 13th and 14th gen processors is at the end of its life. We're gonna see a new 15th gen on a whole new socket potentially later this year. Now these CPUs are best paired up with either the RTX 4060 on the Nvidia side of the equation or AMD's RX 7600. Now of all the combos, these are the two most contentious graphics cards on the market right now. If you saw our original RTX 4060 review, I basically basically slated it as being terrible. Um, so yeah, now I'm recommending it. The RX 7600 was better, but it's hardly the GPU of the century either. However, for 1080p gaming, both of these cards are pretty solid. You can find the 7600 commonly for about 260, 270 US dollars, while the 4060 comes in at just a shade under 300. Both are good for 1080p gaming. The 4060 is gonna provide better ray tracing performance. DLSS 3 is better than AMD's FSR 3 equivalent in our testing, while the 7600 is gonna provide more rasterization performance at a cheaper price. Now, personally for me, the 7600 is the one I'd go for, and paired up with AMD's Ryzen 5 7600 or 7600X is a great pairing. Alternative options include the RTX 3060, which has four gigs more VRAM, but provides less performance by about 15, 20% to both of these cards. So it gets you more video memory, which is better for the future, but gives you less performance. It's a trade-off that, let's face it, none of us really want to make. If you've got a bit more money to spend and are looking for a great 1440p combo, this is is where things get really exciting. Now I will recommend in a heartbeat the AMD RX 7700 XT. Again, when this first launch reception was mixed, it was too expensive. Now it's come down in price. You're looking at about 399 on Newegg at the time of filming. And it pairs up great with the Ryzen 5 7600 X for a combo that will set you back about $600 and deliver pretty exceptional 1440p gaming performance for the price. Again, Intel struggles a little bit here. The lack of upgradability on their LGA 1700 architecture makes the 14600KF, a chip that costs more than the 7600X and gives you a few more cores, a hard one to recommend. The 7700XT provides great entry-level 1440p performance, plus the crucial 12 gigabytes of video memory makes it good now and into the future. Take a look at this VRAM usage figure in the top left of our 7700XT gameplay. You can see some games like Apex Legends aren't remotely bothered, but others have a real knack for the VRAM that the 7700XT and other high memory cards can provide. Move up the lineup further to my high-end 1440p combo, and again, there are genuinely some really exciting options here. These are powered at this level by the RX 7900 GRE, my favourite high-end 1440p GPU. You might be wondering why I'm recommending AMD again here, and it all comes down to value for money. This outpaces the RTX 4070 Super quite comfortably in pretty much everything, and while it doesn't quite hold its own all the time with the 4070 Ti Super, this retails for $549. The 4070 Ti Super comes in at $799. Massive difference. This is best paired up with either Intel's Core i7-14700KF or the AMD Ryzen 7700X. The Intel chip is more expensive, but it's going to offer you better performance. Those extra cores are going to be great for those of you looking to stream or edit or just use your PC for use cases other than gaming alone. When it comes to our testing of this card in pretty much everything, the GRE provides more than enough for what most users are ever going to need. 1440p gaming and this thing feels right at home. Again you get 12 gigabytes of video memory, we're at the level where a bit more VRAM here might be quite nice, and with loads of cooler options available at this $549 price bracket, it's a really compelling option. But James, I want a game at 4K, what would you recommend? Now there are a lot of options here, again on the CPU side there are two that stand out for me. The first is AMD's Ryzen 7 7800X3D. If it's game 
gaming alone that you're looking to achieve at this higher end bracket, the 7800X3D is what I'd go for. Eight cores and 16 threads is adequate for gaming, while the 96 megabytes of L3 cache is massive and locks one of the biggest bottlenecks modern gaming CPUs have faced for a long time. This is commonly available as well for in the $350 range. I've seen this go even below that during big sale events. Latest pricing and availability linked down below, and it pairs up perfectly with high-end GPUs from both NVIDIA and AMD. Whether it be the RTX 4080 Super or AMD RX 7900 XTX, the 7800X3D, or the good Intel offering at this price point, that 14700KF, are both superb options. Intel definitely get more of a look in here, especially for those of you that want those extra cores. Keep an eye out as well, by the way, for Intel's upcoming 15th gen, as that's going to allow Intel again back into the race when it comes to those future upgrade paths. Whether you go for the RTX 4080 Super or RX 7900 XTX, both will provide solid performance at 4K. Personally, I would go for the RTX 4080 Super. Why? The latest price drop when the Super release versus the non-Super card makes it a better value for money proposition, while it's got enough VRAM, and it gives you all of those NVIDIA features. NVIDIA Ray Tracing, DLSS3, Frame Gen, they're all better currently than the AMD counterparts. That isn't to say AMD GPUs are bad or that they aren't catching up, but NVIDIA currently win when it comes to that wider suite of features. Now, of course, if you want to go balls to the walls and spend a ludicrous amount of money, there are some good options at that top end of things too. That brings me on to my final extreme combo, the RTX 4090 and Intel Core i9 4900K. The RTX 4090 has no competition from AMD. It is an absolutely superb card that delivers top end performance for a top end price. When paired up with the 14900K, you're gonna have a system that kicks out a lot of heat, but wipes the floor with virtually anything else. The 4090 is a GPU that I think AMD are gonna even struggle to compete with when they're ready on 8,000 GPUs drop potentially next year. So I don't think this high-end combo is going anywhere. Does it deliver good cost per frame? Absolutely not. Is it good value for money? Not particularly, but if you want the best of the best, there can really be no other options. Which combos do you think you would consider? Let me know in the comments down below. You can find links to everything mentioned today in the description too. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.